Hi, I'm Justin with AudioEnvision.com. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to terminate a Cat6 cable. All the tools I'm using today can be found on my website, AudioEnvision.com forward slash DIY. Before we get started, I'm gonna give you a couple tips how to get through this process quickly and efficiently. First, I want you to get yourself a drop cloth. This is a moving blanket and put this down wherever your workspace is. It'll protect the floor or the furniture, whatever you're working on. Second, you want to make sure to get all your tools prepared and in, and in place so that you're not trying to go back and forth between your toolbox trying to find the right tool. The first tool we're going to be using is a stripper tool. This is just for cutting the cable. Second, we're going to be using a crimp tool. I'm using today the Easy RJ45, but any standard Cat6 crimp tool will work. Third, I have a, uh, just a Cat5 crimp tool. I like using this because it has some extra uh, splitters and splicers on there that we can use today. And finally, we're going to test our cable that we made today with the cable tester. Um, and this one is the Data Shark. It just has two pieces. One sends the signal, one receives the signal, let you know if the cable's good or not. All right, so let's get started. First, we need our Cat6 cable. I get this in a thousand foot boxes, and uh, I recommend you get a white or a lighter color. It makes it easy to write on and keep track of your cables. Second, make sure it's solid core copper. The reason is, is because there's a lot of cheap cable out there. It's made of aluminum, copper clad aluminum, and actually has less of a data rate. You'll be sacrificing the quality of the cable for that. So make sure it's solid core copper, get a lighter color, makes it easy to label. And of course, get your connector right here. This is a Cat6 crimp connector, and it actually has the holes in the front, which allows you to get that sheathing really nice and tight into the cable. All right, so we're gonna terminate this Cat6 cable today in B standard. Now, B standard has a specific order that you have to go in uh, with the wires, and that is stripe orange, orange, stripe green, blue, stripe blue, green, stripe brown, brown. So first I'm gonna take my Cat5 crimper tool. I know I'm terminating Cat6, but this actually has a really nice uh, scoring tool on the outside that that one doesn't. Um, you wanna score that sheathing on the outside and then pull that off. And uh, give yourself about a thumb's length right there. So I'm gonna score right about there with it. So grab your tool and you just wanna go ahead and crimp down lightly just so it touches the sheathing and then rotate around. We're just scoring it making sure not to uh, damage any of the wires inside. And after you do that, go ahead and give it a pull and it should come right off. Next, we need to cut off the strain relief, this little string right here, and also the plastic divider that's inside the cable. So go ahead and push all of your colored pairs aside and just expose that plastic part and the little string. So I'm gonna take the uh, cutting tool right here, my, uh, my wire strippers, and go ahead and cut those off. And you can see it's really nice to have this drop cloth because it's catching all of my little clippings. At the end of the project, I'm just gonna fold this up and shake it out in the trash. As I mentioned before, CAT6B has a certain standard of the order that the wires have to go in. And that order again is stripe orange, orange, stripe green, blue, stripe blue, green, stripe brown, brown. Next step is to straighten out these pairs. As you can see, they have a really tight twist to them. Okay, so you just wanna go ahead and grab each pair and start unwinding the wires. So as I'm unwinding them, I'm actually pinching down here at the bottom. So I'm keeping them nice and organized. And actually, while you're unwinding, you can start getting them in that order that we talked about. Right there, we have stripe orange, orange, stripe green, blue, stripe blue, green, stripe brown, brown. All right, so now I'm gonna grab my other hand. I'm just gonna kind of group all these together while pinching this, making sure they don't get in the wrong order and pull on them and straighten them and keep on doing that until they all get nice and tight next to each other, okay? They need to be nice and tight in order to fit into this connector. And then once you feel like you got all the space in between those wires gone and they're all nice and straight, you can go ahead and prep the end for the connector. Now at the end right here, we can't get those straight. There's some frayed ends that are actually um, just kind of messy. So we're gonna go ahead and cut all that off. We're not gonna use the wire strippers or a pair of wire cutters for that. We actually need flush cuts. So if you have a pair of flush cuts, you can use those. Otherwise, there's actually some flush cuts right here into this, built into this tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and give about a thumb's length of wire there and just give it a nice cut off. 
Okay, so there we have it. As you can see, all the wires are really straight. The, the cut that I made is very straight. The ends are clean, and that's what we're looking for to get this connector on. So while you're still pinching it, I want you to grab the connector with the little clippy side facing away from you, and the order of the cables should start from the top to the bottom with orange at the top and brown at the bottom. Go and slide that in, and you should see little channels inside the connector. Each of the wires are gonna just kinda guide themselves into those channels. If they don't, you have to kinda pay attention, pull it back out, try it again, okay? It might take a couple times, a couple tries the first time. So then you wanna slide that in and get that white sheathing all the way as far as you can into the connector. What that's gonna do is it's gonna, the connector's gonna clip onto that sheathing and give it some strain relief. It also makes for a really nice, clean, professional looking cable. As you're pushing, you'll see that the wires are coming out the other end. That's perfectly normal. We're gonna trim those off using this tool right here. With your excess wire, just form a little point. Go ahead and grab your Cat6 crimp tool with the cutting edge and feed this in all the way in. And I'm holding onto the sheathing, pushing in. And once it's all the way in, secured there, go ahead and give it a squeeze. Now that's doing three things. One, it's cutting off the excess wire right here, nice and flush with the connector. Two, uh, there's a little piece in here that actually pushes down a piece of plastic that, that crimps onto the sheathing and gives it some strain relief. And then three, all of these little terminals right here um, actually get pushed in to the cable and they make contact with the cable by piercing it and getting into the, the copper there. So that all that happens all in one, in one push. So there it is. We have a Cat6 cable terminated in B standard. It's very clean, it's very professional. This will work in any situation you need it to. The last step would be to test it. We gotta make sure it works, right? Now we wanna grab our Cat6 test tool over here. It has a transmit end and a receiver end, okay? This sends a signal to the other end through the cable, and if, uh, if these little lights light up correctly, then we know our cable's good. So let's grab the transmit end. That's usually the one that has the battery in it. And then our receiver end, it's lighter and doesn't have a battery usually. Click your ends in. Go ahead and turn it on. And you can see it's already cycling through the colors there. So what we want to see is that every single pair represented by this number here, one, two, all the way through eight, uh, lights up. And as you can see, they're all going in the proper order there. Now, if this one right here were to go in a different order, or if any of these lights didn't light up, it means I have a problem with my cable. I probably need to redo my connectors. So do a visual inspection of your cables. Make sure that order is good and uh, make sure your tester uh, certifies it and you're ready to go. So wasn't that easy? Now you know how to terminate a Cat6 cable all by yourself for your DIY project at home. Again, all these materials and tools I use today are available at my website, audioenvision.com forward slash DIY. If you have any more questions or comments, you can see the links below or visit my website. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.